as we evaluate offensive linemen, let's talk a little bit about when we pop in film, right? So like what I have, I'm going to pull it up right now when we're talking. I actually have what I call a film eval shell. And I pull it up. It's I got one for each position. And what I do is I break it down and I have things that I look at for each player. And so quarterbacks, I have a shell. Offensive linemen, I have a shell. All, actually, let me rephrase. Offensive tackles, I have one. Offensive interior players, I have a different one. I have one for receivers. So let's talk about it, Ryan. And it begins really with size. And when we talk about size, it's twofold. One is length. And the other is potential for mass. I don't care so much about height. We've seen 6'6 guys like Liam Eikenberg be a little short-armed. We've seen 6'2 guys like Isaiah Wynn be really long-armed guys. It's about the length that we care about. Now, a combination of both is great. But we're more talking about length and then mass potential. Yep. Yeah. And no, I mean, it's said perfectly. And I, I want people to understand the the big difference between that length, right? Because I think a lot of people think about the heights of a player and that doesn't matter as much, man. Like I'm worried about what the arm length is. I'm worried about the, what the wingspan is. Like you said, Isaiah Wynn has a good wingspan for his height. I think of a guy like a Gene DeLance that came out of, that's coming out of Florida this year, despite only being six, three plus he is, he has like 36 inch arms, right? So he's got a massive wingspan. And why does that matter? I think is the more important question, Brian. Like why is, does length mm -hmm. matter so much? Yep. Because when you're going to get guys, and I know we're talking about from a Notre Dame perspective, so this isn't perfect, but like I'm thinking NFL, you're going against guys like Miles Garrett, Von Miller, like these super explosive bandy edges that can cover well, so much it matters. At, let, let, me, let me interrupt you real quick, Ryan, because it does matter at Notre Dame. Because what is Notre Dame recruiting for? They're not recruiting to beat Navy. They're not recruiting to beat Stanford anymore. They're not recruiting to beat Syracuse and UNLV. They're recruiting to beat Bama. They're recruiting to beat Clemson. They're recruiting to beat Ohio State. Well, those guys you mentioned are the play Will Anderson, right? I mean, Trayvon Walker. I mean, you know, a few years ago, it was Joey Bosa on one side and Sam Hubbard on the other side when you're playing Ohio State. So to win those games, you do need that. So I do think, yes, it's, it's, it's even more discussed in the NFL level. But when you're talking about recruiting Notre Dame and you're trying to beat those teams, then yeah, those things matter. So you continue what you're saying, but I, I do I don't want you to undersell the important because I know you believe it. Sure. Undersell the importance of why it matters at Notre Dame. It's the difference between being able to, I mean, look, you can dominate the navies and the UNLVs and all that, but do you have the skill set to dominate? And that's what everything we evaluate on tonight is going to be evaluating the, whether or not these players have the ability to project to play again at that level. That's right. Be the for this. Yeah, I mean, so basically, like, the guys that I'm talking about are incredible athletes, outside track rushers who have just dynamite speed, right? Like, they can win around the around the track with incredible explosion. And th in that case, man, like, we need, we need that length because you are just covering so much more grounds when you're setting and when you're trying to get your punch to the outside. Or else, a guy like Yvonne Miller, like I said, He's going to go shit. He's going to run right past you on the outside track. Like that's easy. And a lot of a really easy way to tell if a guy has good length outside of just looking at his arm reach when he's kind of punching outside is the guys that usually overset one of two things. Either they have bad foot quickness and they're overcompensating to get outside or they don't have length and they have to really just contort their body and start to turn. And that's where you see them get hit with a lot of inside moves. So length matters so much for offensive tackle. That's the unteachables that we'll talk about tonight. These here's what here's what doesn't matter. Yep. Here's what doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. No more O linemen under six five. So with that offensive line philosophy, that would mean I got a list of names. I'm going to scratch off the list that we're not going to look at anymore. No more Sam Mustafer. No more Robert Hainsey. No more Chris Watt. No more Jarrett Patterson. No more Zach Martin. Out. Got to go because you're not 6'5". Has nothing to do with that. I don't care if you're 6'2". If you have 35-inch arms, I care about that. Uh, Caden Madden's problem this year was never he was 6'2". It was he has short arms and he's not athletic. Exactly. I don't care about height. Height doesn't matter nearly as much as length, right? It just doesn't. Now, there, there, there comes a point in time, Ryan, where the, the height becomes a problem. If you're a 5'11 left tackle with 35-inch arms, I can't mess with you, right? <laughs> right? But we're, he said, he's talking about offensive tackles. Well, Zach Martin was an offensive tackle in college. Robert Haynes, he was an offensive tackle in college and a four-year starter. Again, 6'5 doesn't matter. 
Liam Eikenberg is six six. He has short arms. Yeah. Right. Well, you can That's you can even ex- you can even extend it to the NFL. I mean, Tristan Wirfs is below six five. Trent, Trent Williams is below six five. David Bakhtiari is below six five. Like they're all six four and some change. Dwayne Brown, who's been a really good player out of Virginia Tech and played with the Seattle Seahawks and the Houston Texans during his career, he's like six four and some change. Mm-hmm. Ika Mekwanu is going to be maybe the first offensive tackle off the board. He's six four. Length. It's yep. length and wingspan. So those are things that matter. So again, there again, there comes a point in time where I'm not going to say there's like five seven and thirty five inch arms. That's not going to work for me. But give me a six three guy with thirty four inch arms and, and he's athletic. He can play left tackle for me against anybody. That's just the reality of it. Okay. So it's about the length. That's the key. That's the key. And he just said most elite tackles aren't short. You just listed a bunch of elite tackles. So this conversation is going to end because it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, next, you kind of get into the strength, right? What are things we look for when it comes to strength? It's not weight room strength. There's two things we look for when it comes to strength, mainly. And, we, and there's different aspects of it. But number one is hand strength, right? And you can kind of see just the heaviness of the hands, right? And then comes that second level power, which is the ability to then extend. That's where people say the bench press doesn't matter. It does for offensive linemen. To me, it does, because that's the one position where you need to be able to bench, you know, to to get a guy off of you. And then there's the lower body strength. Can you drive? Right. So when we talk about strength, this guy's a strong player. It usually means he's pretty good in those three areas. Right, Ryan. And let's again, we can talk about why that kind of stuff matters. Yeah, no, we can. I mean, that's that's one of the there's there's really two things outside of the unteachables that I grade most for offense tackles. This is number one, core strength is my biggest thing, right? Like I need that strong core when you deliver a punch. Defense a lot need to feel it, man. You need to be able to jolt. And then especially when you're working outside track and a guy puts his foot in the ground and is trying to convert speed to power, you need to be able to sit down. I think people think that that's just lower body. No, man, like you need to extend. Get, sit your weight down, tighten that core, and be able to press and lock mm-hmm. out at the point of attack. So core strength for me and flexibility, which I'm sure we'll talk about a, a ton here as mm-hmm. well, a core strength for me is essential because you're out right. on an island one-on-one and there are some powerful bendy dudes outside right. that are just going to drive you back to the quarterback if you don't have it. So you get into athleticism. There's a lot of things that go in there. This is just pure athleticism. This isn't technical aspects of it. It's obviously burst off the line. It's foot quickness. The ability to not see some guys have really good foot quickness out of their stance, but then it comes to the flexibility part because if I'm quick out of my stance, but I'm really heavy, you know, tight hipped and, or I'm heavy footed and I plant and it takes me a while to then redirect on a double move. I lack the, the the quickness to really play that position at a high level. So it comes down to initial quickness. It comes down to uh, we don't really talk about speed. It's more again, it's more about quickness. You know, can you can you bend? That's another athletic trait. We use the expression, you know, knee benders versus. I don't know if younger people use that, Ryan, but you know, us old heads do. Knee bender, waist bender. You want a guy that's bending at the knees, not at the waist. Some yeah. guys just aren't real good at that. They're just not flexible. That comes that you know, balance is very important. You know, can you and balance is important because if I'm coming at you and we're hand fighting and you give me a good shot in the arm, I need to be have that that not only the strength but the balance to recover and quickly get back into the fight. And that's another part of it. So those are just some of the physical traits that you look for. Now, in some offenses, speed is gonna is gonna matter a little bit more. Short area speed. So if you're an offense that pulls and traps a lot, if you're an offense that gets on the perimeter a lot, there is a level of short area speed that I need to know that you can get out there quick enough. But then when you're out there, can you bend? Can you move? Can you redirect? All those kind of things. So there there is a level of short area speed that matters. It's just like when when we talk about linemen, I I still don't understand why they have linemen run forty yards. Have them run twenty. And give me the ten yard split and the five yard split, and that's all I, I really care about. I I only need ten yards to be honest. I don't even need to see the the. I mean, I, I guess we could talk about the uh, the. I go. To, you know why I say twenty? Because I yeah. want a guy to accelerate through the point that I care about. That's fair thing. I don't want him like dipping his head to kind of find out. You know, like you know, see when they get to the finish line, they all like kind of do that little track thing. I don't care about that. So mm-hmm. I want him running beyond the point I care about. So have sure. around 20, then give me the 10 and the five times. That's all yep. I care about at this point in time. Yeah, And if I could add on to just a little bit of the athleticism side of things, I mentioned before flexibility was a huge thing for me. It's it's so important at offensive tackle because guards, like it for the mar- large majority, because you're always going to see some freaks inside where you're just like, that dude is just a silly athlete, like an Aaron Donald, for instance, right on, on the NFL level. But 
and a guard for the most part, you're going to play against a guy that doesn't redirect as quickly as would a, an edge rusher, right? But when you're facing up against a guy, again, I'm going to use Miles Garrett as an example because I think he's the most freaky athlete in the NFL right now at the position. He could change direction and hit an inside counter in a blink of an eye. So that flexibility is what I'm talking about. Because the one thing that I want people to understand is that not every rep is going to be perfect for an offensive yeah. lineman. You're not going to hit that kick slide, be at per- perfect depth, be attached, and just be able to mirror and you're done. So there's going to be some times where your body gets contorted in bad w- bad positions, but the flexibility you have to kind of reposition yourself and then anchor, that is so important because it is not always going to look pretty. It's but about, I mean, The expression I like to use, Ryan, is get, can you get back in the fight? Right, that's the big thing. If you get knocked off, if like you said, the rep's not perfect, he gets under your pads. Can you recover? Right? Can you anchor? Exactly. Can you get his hands off of you? You know, do you have that strength to do that? Can you redirect those type of things? I think that's all part of that athletic package, and that's also why length is so important too, Ryan. And and there was a question up here that I wanted to to get to about that. Tommy Guns asked in terms of length, what is good, medium, and bad wingspan? If you can kind of give that number, but that's another reason why, because you'll see it all the time with a really long lineman. Like you'll see Ronnie Stanley do this in the NFL. He did it in the, in, in college, especially early in his career. Ronnie's footwork was not great early on 13 and 14, got a lot better by 15, but in 14, there were times and his foot, his footwork would get him in trouble and he would come out, and the guy clearly had him beat off the edge. But he was so long that he could still get hands on and then recover, right? And that's another reason why that length is is important. It's not just about when we're coming direct hand to hand combat. Can I keep you off my body because my arms are longer than your arms? Think about when you're a if you had a younger sibling or somebody else, and you mess with them, you put their hand on their your hand on their forehead, and they're just swinging and they can't get to you. That's length, <laughs> right? Like that's an arm reach advantage. Similar principle, but you know, in a more grown-up way, if if I got my arms extended and you can't get to my chest, I'm going to win that battle, right? As long as, and that's why you know, when we get to technique, you know, being able to play inside, we don't spend a we're not going to spend a lot of time on technique because that's a teachable thing, right? The film breakdown we'll do is more so on the unteachables, sure, right? Doesn't mean that they can't be improved, but you know, you're not going to go from a four nine forty to a four four forty if you're a receiver, right? You're not because uh, my technique got better. Yeah, you know, um, but but that's again why the the length is part of that. Re- it's ability to recover. And like I said, mm-hmm. I like to use it. We used to say this all the time as a, as a coach: get back in the fight. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's that it's that principle of because every single play for a lineman is a fight. It, I mean, we, you stand next to offensive linemen competing, and it's a fight. It's a battle. If offensive linemen did in public what they do on the practice field, people are like those two dudes are brawling. I mean, that's what people would say. Yep. Right. So that's the ability to get back in that fight. And so that's why length is so important, balance, foot quickness. That's why strong hands are important because it's really hard to do that without strong hands. Because like you said about Miles Garrett, and and, and it's one thing you use Miles Garrett. I'm going to use the same school, but an older guy, Von Miller, his hand, he was never a super big guy, but his hands were really strong. And when he got his hands on you, you were done. Unless you were one of those few elite linemen that either you could out, length them or you could really have those strong hands so most really elite offensive linemen have pretty fast and heavy hands that's the other thing too we didn't talk about ryan when it comes to athleticism Mm -hmm. it's not just length and heaviness you got to have some speed if you're a plotter with your hands just like you are with your feet then you're going to lose that because he's going to i may have longer arms but he's going to get his hands into my chest before i can get my hands on him Exactly. So that's another exactly. that's another part. I really like to compare line play to boxing. I, I really think it's one of the more ap- appropriate sports correlations, right? Because it's not just about having, a, you know, if, if you're a heavy puncher, but you're a slow puncher, unless I suck, I'm going to be able to kind of get out of the way of those punches, right? It's the, it's the ability to combine the hand speed, hand power, agility, balance, the ability to kind of get knocked off, but then get back in the fight. All those things. That's why I really I use a lot of boxing terms when I'm explaining offensive linemen. No, I love it. I love it. And I, I think you see a lot of offensive linemen now in the NFL. Like they do like the boxing stuff in the offseason now. Like that's the hand to hand combat. You know, I, I think everyone just thinks of Aaron Donald doing it with the knives and everything, which are fake, by the way, but still a, a good talking point. And I mean, to Tommy's question, real quick, Tommy, just for like NFL standards, the arm length thing used to be 
34 inches was kind of the cutoff. Now it's kind of gotten a little less. Like teams will kind of accept 33 because now we see guys like Rashawn Slater last year that only had 33. Um, Penny, so I think like had 33 and a quarter. So arm length is decreasing a little bit in a, in a keen world though, offensive tackles, you want an 80 inch wingspan. That's kind of, that's kind of the number you want to shoot for. Like that's a passable. If it's less than 80 inches and you have a good arm length, that means that you probably just don't have broad shoulders. So like your upper body is just a little bit of a, of an odd one for an offensive tackle. If you're over 82, then you're in very good territory. And then if you're over 85, then you're like an elite, elite dude. Like that's where the arm length is like freaky stuff. So just for some context, there's like arm length, what you're kind of looking for. No, no, I mean, I I think you said it up perfectly. We're not as much talking about technique because technique can always get better. We're talking about the traits that we think will allow some of these players to potentially play offensive tackle. That's why we kind of had that little breakdown of what's important for an offensive tackle. So I think you, I think you nailed it perfectly.